Hi, Pink Girly here. Today I'm going to work on a project that I'm calling Jelly Plating with a Twist. I like to make journals, junk journals, and I really kind of like the vintage look and I like putting in the ephemera, working with old books, old book pages. But I really don't like to tea stain pages that I'm going to use in the book. To me, it's a very long, tedious process. My kitchen counter is covered with wet paper and it seems like it takes them forever to dry. And so I was, you know, thinking there's got to be a better way or an easier way to do this. So I started to mess around with diluting some acrylic paint and spraying my pages to get a tea stained, coffee stained, or just a stained page look. And so I came up with this. This is a little notebook that I stained the pages and I diluted acrylic paint in a spray bottle. And uh, then I would do a couple pages at a time and then hit it with my heat gun. And then I started to uh, mess around with other colors. So uh, this one I did in pinks. And of course it warps your pages. So if you don't like fluffy pages, this would not be for you. But then I added to this one um, some gold ink batterings on the pages, which I really like. And I bought a jelly plate, probably a good four to six months ago. I really kind of forgot I had it. And I've watched some girls do some uh, shows, live shows with their jelly plating. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should get one of those. So I did, and then I forgot. I stuffed it underneath my counter, and I forgot I had it. So a lot of those gals, they do amazing things, and the paper looks wonderful, but I don't really journal where I would use um, a portion of, uh, of a jelly plate, plated uh, print in a journal. I mostly art and craft to resell. Um, some of my things in two local shops, I have an Etsy shop, which really is a mess, and I need to spend more time there. Um, and I like to do the videos, so I don't really use, I just couldn't see myself using single, necessarily single sheets of jelly plated prints. So I was thinking about how I might adapt that process of jelly plating to something that I could use in my life. And so when I was working on these pages and either making them distressed or just giving them some color and character, I thought, well, why can't I do that with the jelly plate? So I got my jelly plate out and I started to mess around a little bit. And that's what I ended up with was this. And that's what I'm going to work on today. Another one of these books. So this little notebook, I just jelly plated these pages. I started out with some pink and then I added some, um, cherry red distress ink on the jelly plate and then at one point I started to add some purple I did use some stencils and I didn't want anything too dark because I want to be able to write on these pages so this little notebook I got uh, several of them they were uh, marked 60% off at Michael's last week so these are really inexpensive, but the thing I like about them is that they're soft covered so I can cover them and they're stitched. So it's very flexible for me to be able to put down on the jelly plate. So that's my project for today's video. So this is my jelly plate. And when I saw the girls working online with their jelly plate, I mean, I knew it was not a hard, hard surface, but I really didn't realize that it's as flexible as it is. So this is really, if you're not familiar with it, it's really quite flexible. And I got the, uh, I guess it's the 8x10 size, eight, yeah, 8x10 size. 
I can't recommend a brand because I've never used um, anything other than this. And I've only used it one other time. So I ordered mine on Amazon. And I opted for the 8x10. They have different shapes. They have small ones. Like if you just do greeting cards, you may not want one uh, as large as this. But for me, and not really knowing how I might use it, I got this one that's a little bigger. Because I figured I could always cut the paper down. So that's how, it, that's just what came on top of it in a, um, like a clam type plastic container. So I have my jelly plate ready. I have a few brayers. This one I picked up at a thrift shop. It's wooden. I'm not sure that this will work or do anything for me, but I'm going to try that one. And then I had gotten this and a larger brayer in a, it's a, two came in the set from Amazon. Works fine. But this is like, they're like a, a hard rubber. They're not like, they are a hard rubber brayer. So I have that here. I have an extra sheet of paper off to the side to clean my brayer off. I didn't do that the first time that I used my jelly plate. And I think that's probably a good idea. So my plan for today is not to um, do heavy duty gel plating because I want to be able to do my pages with not a real heavy dark print so that the pages can be written on it and used for a journal. Now these are what I call no junk journals. Well, they won't have any ephemera in them, just the pages, and then I'll decorate the cover to match what's inside. So I thought I'd like to do something more with along the lines of the tea stained look. And so um, actually I started another video and I was having trouble with my focusing. So this is a restart. So I've already loaded up my sprayer. This is a distress sprayer um, from Ranger. And I just put in some water up to about here and then squirted in my acrylic paint, which for today I chose Autumn Brown. It's a ceramic coat um, brand. And I just squeezed them in there. My ratio is about two to three. I mean, a two to one, uh, maybe about three ounces or so. And then I just shake that up real well. So then I can spray it and that would look fine on a paper but I'm going to spray it on my jelly mat jelly um, plate and um, I've also got some pink here that I use for that other project so I might put some of that in in as well and then I pulled out some of my stencils and um, just going to do some random stuff see how it works and I'm going to print right in, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to print right in my little notebook rather than doing individual sheets of paper. I'm going to go right in my notebook. So I need to load up my jelly plate. And as I'm looking at my camera, that looked crooked. I'm trying to make it straight so it looks okay for you guys. I've added some light to my work area, so I'm hoping this uh, video is um, a little easier for you to see. So, somewhere here, oh, there's my notebook. Okay, so I'm new to this. Maybe we'll learn as we go along. But the first thing I want to do, I believe, is I'm going to do a tester. So I'm going to take some straight acrylic paint and I'm going to put a little bit on my jelly plate. And somewhere I have some pink, which I did not get down. And of course I probably should have some white. So I'm just going to blop this out. 
And then I'm going to use my um, brayer and just, oh, that looks like a melted ice cream cone. I'm just spreading this paint. I probably should get the bigger one all over the jelly plate. Maybe I will get that bigger one. I'll clean this off of my little one. Now I can just put a piece of paper down on this, in theory, and then when I pull it up, I'm not really going to have any kind of design on this one because... You know what, I'm just going to use the back of this old coloring book page. Put that down and just add some pressure. And then when you peel it up, you have that design of what was down on the jelly plate. So that's, um, I don't mind the coloring, but it really doesn't look washed out. Or like it would be tea stained which is what I really am going for in my little notebook so this time I'm going to add my paint just a couple of drips and drops here and there and then I'm going to add a little bit of pink I think I will add some white this time and then the only other thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to spray it down with the the pink I'm using I guess I should tell you is I got this on clearance a Tuesday morning it's uh, a stencil paint by deco art called baby pink and then I'm going to add some white which is the uh, Americana Snow White. That's way too much. And um, I think I'm going to go ahead and spray it now. Kind of wet down the surface. So that my paint is real loose. So I've got my pink in a sprayer. I've got my brown in a sprayer. And now I'm going to take my brayer now that's really moving very it's really sloppy but this is kind of a sloppy kind of a craft anyway and I'm going to take one of my now I'm, I want to um, remember that my book is going to lay this way so I have a page here and a page here so Maybe I'll put that on that way, and I'm going to brayer that up a little bit. And then I'm going to take maybe this one on an angle. And then I'm going to clean off my brayer. I didn't allow myself enough room and now I'm going to take my book and I'm going to start in the center because I'm not sure what I want to do for my covers and I'm just going to drop this down my little notebook and I'm going to really press that center out when I did the my original book I I at times had a white stripe down the center of my book because I didn't flatten it out well enough. And then I'm just going to pull that up. And that's what I have. That's cool. It's still light enough where you can still work on the pages. Now the thing with doing it this way, so you know, I got a lot of excess on the edge of the pages. And I don't really want those to stick together. 
but I need to use my heat gun so that I can work on another page. And the thicker that it is, the longer it will take to dry. Of course, acrylic paint dries fairly quickly, but on paper, um, I'm not sure because I have it really thick in the center. I don't know if you can see how thick that is. And the reason I want to dry this up is that I'll need to close this or turn the pages to do my next jelly plate. Now what I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do is edit this video and fast forward through some of this or trim out some of it, but I'm not quite sure. I've been flip-flopping between two programs I can't seem to um, get a happy medium of um, getting my videos to to work the way I want. So I think probably what I should do to avoid some of this spillage onto, although I don't really mind that, but I don't want my pages to stick together. Like I don't mind how it looks, but I think I should put some kind of barrier between my pages and then that way if I've got some that squishes out the end it won't get on the pages that are underneath. Now I should be able to do another print I would think on this because when I pick this up from where I put the um, brayer, I still have this design. So I'm going to go to another page and I have a little bit of squishage there on the edge. This is all technical terminology kids. Squish, squishage. All right, so I'm going to open this up as much as I can. And for me, I don't really need this to be perfect, but if you uh, want your project to be a little more controlled and perfect, um, you might have to figure out a different way. So I've got that pressed down. Oh, cool. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try to adjust my, my lighting. I don't know if that's worse or... Let me turn that off. Let me turn this one off for a minute. Oh, maybe you can see that way. See, that looks cool. Nice. So that is not real heavy with paint. So I'm just going to let that dry by itself while I reload. I should have gotten some paper towels out. I have some right here. Because I have a little bit of a mess over here on the side. So let me clean that up. Um, I think this time I'm going to just try, and I'm not going to brayer this, so I'm just sprayed my liquid, my um, watered down acrylic paint, I'm just spraying that, and I'm going to turn to another page in my, well maybe I better hit this with the heat gun just a little bit here so it doesn't stick to itself. Now this may have a little bit of design left from what I did prior. 
but a lot of it should just be splats, I would think. So I'm going to be hopping around the book because I don't want any particular pattern per se, you know. So I'm flattening, flattening this out again. And then I'm just going to pick up, put it where I think I want to pick up most of my design, if you will, on my jelly plate. And I'm just giving this a good rub. And then I don't want to get my thumb in it. Cool. I can see where this is easy to get hooked on. See, now for me, I can then go ahead and decorate my cover and use this book and as a journal and put it in one of my shops. Um, the other gals that I've watched on YouTube, they do individual sheets of paper and then they cut them down and they either use them to cover a book or to create a uh, a journal spread in one of their journals but I'm liking this and I like the brown and the pink combo so the next one I think I'm going to do let me just hit this just a little bit give it a head start I still have a little bit of extra paint on the edges where um, I originally loaded up the jelly plate a little too much Cool, I'm liking that. So now I'm going to shake my pink. Um, I had this left over from that other project where I did all pink pages. Um, so I don't have a whole lot in here, but the same same type of thing. Two parts water to one part paint. And then I just shook it up. So I'm going to use this leftover. And I'm going to put that on my jelly plate. And then I think I'm going to add that to the center and apparently you can um, put little blobs of thread or whatever you want on your your jelly plate i'm going to put this rose up in the corner for that page and then i'm going to just find another blank page in my book now, the thing I don't like about this, really, if I had my choice, would be to be have a bigger stencil. But I only have these narrow ones. Like, I don't have 8 by 10 stencils because I'm going to get this border around um, that image there. But you know what? I'm going to have to live with it because that's what I have available. So now I've got my watered down acrylic on the jelly plate. And I'm just going to drop my pages down. And give that a press and then be careful picking it up so I don't put my thumb in the print the rose didn't really turn out you can kind of see that was a little too watery so I'll have to do that again with um, the regular paint but you know it still looks cool who wouldn't like a journal like this I don't know I like it and you can do any color combination. If you have some paper that you wanted to cover a, a book in or a notebook, you could even do this with a composition book. Taking notes for school and something fun. So I'm going to give that chance to dry and pull up my stencils see and then I still have another pattern here that really um, would work for um, I have some cardstock here let me have a let me take a piece of cardstock that's just handy and I'm going to put that down I think they call this the negative print so I'm just going to rub that, see what we get. Eh, not too bad. You could cut this out and use it for um, like little um, 
oh gosh, it's not coming to me. Little um, journaling cards for another another book. I mean, that's not bad. So that kind of cleans my plate. So now I think I want to do maybe let's do. Um, A little bit of pink. I'm going to do a little bit of white. And I know my paper is white, but what this does is this allows me to have some spots on the on the print where the pink um, is a little lighter. And then what I did before with my other book is I used some of this, this Dilutions um, ink spray from Ranger. So I'm just going to put a little spritz of this down in that one spot. And then I have water in a spray bottle. Now I don't have this adjusted for a spray. Let me see. Okay. And then I'm just going to spray a little bit of water on my jelly plate because I don't want that real intense color. And then I'm going to come in and brayer it out. Now you really could brayer it just like that and then put your paper on because you might get a design that you like. Now that pink of a cherry pie is um, just going to add a different coloration for me, which is good. And I should have gotten a bunch of uh, paper that I could clean my sprayer off on. I didn't. I guess I could use paper towel. Um, okay, so now on this one, I was thinking I might use um, I really kind of wish I had a well, this one doesn't have any edges. Let's use this one. And I'll use that. This would really be nice in the center of a book, but I'm going to put it down like that. And then I'm going to just push that down with my brayer into the paint. See what we get. Make sure my pages are dry. I'm going to flip to another page and flatten that out. I'm going to try to get that right down the center. And I'm pulling it up. Now, that kind of is a hot mess, but it looks nice. You don't really see the definition of the tree. But, I mean, it's still cool. But I think because I, I watered it down, it takes away from the image. I mean, you can see a couple of branches here and there. All right, I'm going to hit this with the gun just a little bit here at the bottom. I think next time maybe I'll go out in my garden and pick some flowers. Or uh, what, some flower petals would be cool. Or um, some leaves. I might be able to... Um, use those to get different kinds of impressions. Um, the one gal I watched, she used um, like little hairy fibers, like little threads. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. And now I want to pick up my stencil here. And I'm going to use my tweezers because my fingernails 
do not exist. I, mean, I don't think that's really going to make too much of an impression. I'm going to spray a little brown around the outside edges here. This sprayer is not working real great. I'm trying not to push it full throttle, so that could be part of the problem. It's still a little damp on the side there. You want to be careful with your heat gun too. You don't want to torture paper and you certainly don't want to burn your fingers. Because these are really good hot. Now I've got brown there, so I don't really want to put it brown on the next page. So I'm going to skip over a couple. Now you may be thinking that this is just as tedious as tie dyeing, uh, tea dyeing, I always say tie dyeing, tea dyeing a, a bunch of paper, but I don't know. Half, oh, I like that. Half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. Oh, isn't that cool? Yeah, I'm liking that. See, I think I can get another page out of that. My hair keeps falling on the paper and on the jelly plate. Sir, so sometimes I think I'm going to be bald before the end of the video. All right, I'm going to dry this a little. had maybe a stencil with some words on it maybe that would be nice but I don't think I'm trying to think if I have anything like that and I don't think I do I think I'm going to try to get this last bit of paint up and put this on my back cover Now, really, if you wanted the whole book to match, you really could do like we did here. Uh, get some nicer paper or even cardstock, make a jelly print, and then cut that to use it as your cover. Well, there wasn't much paint to pick up. But that's okay, because we can reapply and uh, do it again. So, this time I'm going to try just the um, pink watered down. and press that down again. Yeah, that's much better. Let me see what else I have here. I have some butterflies, but again, I'm going to have that border I guess that would be okay. So let's do some pink. I'm trying to think what I have sitting around here that I could add to this. I have this little metal frame. That might be kind of cute. Somewhere I know I have, um, I wonder if I could pop 
this off. No, that one's really crooked. This is a hanger for like a... Um, I wonder if that would dig into my plate. A hanger for like an ornament. That might be fun to put that on. I've got all the little bits and bobs sitting here to the left of me. I haven't figured out how to turn, even if I turn this sound down, the Facebook messages still come through. So I've got that on. Oh, I want to spray some of this cherry ink. Do a little bit of that. And I think I'm going to put some white right in there. Now, if you paint a lot or you're familiar with acrylic paints, I'm sure you've noticed that the um, folk art paint is a lot thicker. So for this technique, I would kind of stick with the um, ceramic coat or the um, Americana. not doing too well with my I apologize for all the little ding dings all right so I'm gonna put my butterflies I think on this corner I'm gonna angle them and just brighter that push that down into that paint a little bit and then I'm going to put my little uh, frame, I think, over here. And I'm going to put that little thing there. If I could find a third little something, something. That would be really great. Oh, look at this. This is a little bit of a doily. Let's try that. Let me see. I'm going to take this little, little guy. Hmm. I think I'm going to, have to really press that when I get my book down. Okay, so let's find another blank page. Maybe next to a brown page. Yeah, let's try here. Let's see if I can capture all those areas. Now, I really want to rub over here where that doily is because that didn't seem like it was responding very well to the paint. So when I was in Michael's the other day, they had a lot of things that were 60% off and these little notebooks were one of them. Oh, that's a little disappointing. See, I didn't even get the butterflies. So I wonder what I'm doing wrong there. I mean, this wasn't super wet. But I didn't even get the image of the butterfly. I wonder if I'll get something on the reverse side of it. I mean, the page is fine as far as the journal goes. But it's disappointing as far as the um, design that I had hoped would pop up. All right, let me try this. I crafted for many years without a heat gun. And I'm not sure how I ever did that because now I use it almost every day. I used to sit and wait for things to dry, I guess. Now I know this is a no junk journal, but but this is also another idea that if you're making one of these for yourself, I mean, you certainly could add um, paper and make little.
bits and tuck spots and add um, things that you like, ephemera that you like and you might want in your book. And you also could go through and stamp um, images. If you have some stamps, like say you were doing a, a flower theme and you wanted to go through and stamp some roses and some words and some sentiments on certain pages, you could certainly do that. Now I'm going to try to lift up these little items and see if we can get anything yeah, see this mostly took it the paper because that's paper it kind of duh took that. I'm wondering if I need to just spray and get a little moisture. It looks very dry. So we'll do that. So I'm only going to do a couple more of these and then I'm going to finish up this video. And then I will finish these pages on my own. And then I'll come back and do a second video and show you how I decorate the cover. And then I'll show you how my pages look. But you should get the general idea of what's, of what's going on here. Again, no particular design, but it looks really cool. You can see the frame just a little bit there. There certainly is a learning curve. And I do like the um, deepness in the pink color that the um, that, that uh, ink gives it. The Delusions ink spray. I like that page. I'm going to add some brown. I'm going to add a little bit of brown paint, just a drip. That's a big drip. A little shaker bottle of this would be great, wouldn't it? Get on that, Tim Holtz. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add some white, I think, near those brown spots. I think I'll put that right in the center. And then I'm going to try to do a light, um, just breathe that lightly. And I'm going different directions here. I'll move that out to the edge. You could really come back in with, um, maybe I could show you that. See, like I would put some paint on this, this is a cap, some paint and use that as a stamp and make circles on a page. That would be, that would be cute. Okay. Oh, look. <laughs> I have some squished out the edge. Boy, that really sticks to it. That really peeled up a bunch. Cool. It just reminds me of strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Neapolitan ice cream that is now melted in my bowl. Ice cream soup. This jelly plate has an odor to it. It's it's pleasant, but it's different. It kind of no. This is very fun. This is kind of dry down here, and I didn't really, not really picking up anything. So I'm gonna add some. No, I think my little. Rug rats are wanting to get outside. So let me just finish this up. I'm going to add a little bit of this cherry pie. 
And I'm going to put a little drip of white there. Just a minute, Sade. And I'm going to just sprayer this a little bit. Mm. That might fit my whole page. So let me try that. I'll find a blank spot. I got lots of pages still to do. Okay, it sounds like they're getting ready to wreck the joint. All right, so again, I'm just pressing that down. I'm not getting that image. I think it might have to do with the fact that I am watering down the paint. So that's it. That's my uh, trial of my jelly plating. I do want to show you this. So if you have in your book or if you're just doing pages, I'm just going to move my jelly plate aside. And if I put a little uh, white paint out, I don't have much luck with um, white ink. Like an ink pad and you can take any image if you take a random put some random dots and you could really twist them and then you can use different sizes i have a straw here somewhere that i use I save all kinds of stuff. It's like my poor husband. He's like, we're saving trash again. So you could do this in your book too. Just add little, you can do all different sizes. See, and then you could really tear that out and use that for a cover. Or if you're doing just a regular journaling page, um, mixed media page you could use this don't throw anything away save everything all right I think I'm going to say goodbye that's the end of this video hopefully I'll see you on the next video where I show you my finished pages and show you how I'm going to cover this um, no junk journal thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment I'll get back to you and I hope to see you at the next video thanks so much Bye-bye.